years, can't you favor us with a smile on your graduation day? Hi, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, boss? Couldn't you tear yourself away? <laughs> How was the stretch this time, boss? Tough? No. Mm, uh, which is why I didn't crash out like always. <laughs> I was sure expecting you to. Nice car. It's all yours. Ours. Everything we got. You're a swell pal, Eddie. Yeah, I heard all about it. You done a good job while I was gone. And I ain't forgetting it. I did big, Eddie. You're a lot richer than when you went in. We're a lot richer. Thanks, Eddie. Oh, I forgot to tell you, we got a couple of new spots downtown. Real class. I got the guy waiting to show you the books. I take your word for it, like always. Of course, we got troubles, too. I take care of the troubles. Like when we was kids. Me and you against everybody, eh, Smiley? Sure. <laughs> got my rod. Wearing it right next to my heart. Let me have it. Sure. Walking down the street, minding my own business. I step off the curb. Car comes tearing around the corner against the red light. The cop should have picked up the driver of that car, not me. Say, are you a trustee? Yes. How long have you been in this store? 300 odd years. Gosh, it's hot here. It gets like this in Florida sometimes. Florida? Lord, I never smell like this. Like rotten eggs. Precisely, young man. Rotten eggs. The unpleasant odor is caused by H2SO4. Hydrogen sulfuric acid. The most common compound of hydrogen and sulfur. Am I right? I poisoned my wife with a sulfur compound. My young wife. She was unfaithful. I was a chemist. What do you mean? Was? Before they hanged me. Where the rope marks. Young man, what is the last thing you remember before they brought you here?
Smiling. Smiley. That slimy, double-crossing rat. Plugging me with my own rat. Where are the bullet holes? He missed. Sitting right next to me, and he missed. He didn't miss. You're dead. What? We're all dead. Listen to this mug, will you? It's true. Only the soul exists down here. Gee. He always said I'd wind up down here. Look, I don't care where I am. I gotta get Smiley. There must be somewhere to crash this can. Abandon hope. All ye who enter here. Stay off of me, screw! Stay off of me, I tell you! I gotta get out of here. I'm getting Smiley! Stay off of me, I tell you! I gotta get Smiley! What sort of temperature is that? It's the labor shortage, sire. Especially the boiler room personnel. There's been a fearful drop. We are operating at but 73% of normal. Do you want me to catch my death a cold? No, sire. We're short of condemned souls. I objectly suggest... Warden, I have no need of your infantile suggestions. I'll attend to this matter myself. My opponent has always, through some favored mortal of his, tested my prowess. This time it happens to be one Judge Frederick Parker of the New World. Well, we'll see who goes down to defeat. My beloved sire, your powers are wondrous to behold. I have lately been beset by great problems. My adversary is working overtime. But superior though he may be, and though he set up a thousand Judge Parkers to thwart me, he must recognize that I am still master of my own sphere. You uttered it, sire. See the bastardous judge! What in my domain is that? You have no right to pay. I'm still out of here, I tell you! Let go of you dirty coppers! I'll get every one of you quiet! You can't hold me here! All I want to do is get a rat! You can't keep me! What's the meaning of this? How dare you bring him here? We have no choice, Gordon. <laughs> I apologize for the intrusion, sire. Not at all, Warden. Pour me a drink. You're not angry? Angry? On the contrary, I'm very pleased. In fact, I'm delighted. To... Uh, what was his name? You mean the doomed soul that was here, Kegel, Eddie Kegel? Eddie Kegel. You drink to him. 
A cheap gangster. Why not? I love him. Ever see that face before? Of course. He was just here in this room, Eddie Cable. Wrong, Warden. That happens to be a picture of Judge Frederick Parker. Impossible. They look exactly... Precisely. They look exactly alike. And this likeness is just the weapon I need to defeat Mr. Parker. Eddie Cagle. Wait till they stick in them hot clay pits way down below. You mean we ain't at bottom now? There ain't no bottom in this joint. Back to one. Back. Back to your work. Nobody crashes out of here. Nobody but Eddie Cagle. He breaks out from every place. I'll crash out with you, Eddie. Who are you? A pal. I don't like pals. You mean like Smiley? How do you know about Smiley? Grapevine. I can help you get him. I got somebody I want to get, too. We can help each other. Is it a deal? We gotta crash first. I know how. Next. Screws. Well, Eddie? I'll be extremely careful. Rub that smile off your map. A guy smiled once when you plucked me. Certainly. Come on. Now. Hey. Are you stern out to something? That's the finest. The only way. Come on. Down here. Since time immemorial. The way you talk, you must have had a good education. The most liberal one. I only went to third grade. I went through the whole gamut of learning. I know everything. Stuck on yourself, huh? What's your name? Well, I have a number of aliases. I have a long record under the name of Mephistopheles. Greek, huh? Well, there are some who claim I'm more of one nation than another, but that's not true, Eddie. I'm of all nations. I play no favorites. You look like a con man. Look, member Popolis. Call me Nick. You married? Millions of women have adored me. Quite a guy with the ladies, huh? I'm a fascinating fellow. Look, Mark, playing around with dames is dynamite. But delightful dynamite, Eddie. Live fully while you may and reckon not the cost. Deny yourself nothing. Flame and blaze like a torch and toss the fire about you. Oh, Mark, I am said it. I'll make the most of what we yet may spend before we too into the dust descend. They're talking screw. <laughs> <laughs> Is it all right if I laugh occasionally? There ain't nothing to laugh about. I never saw nothing to laugh about my whole life. From the time I left school and ran away from home on account my folks was always drunk and fighting, I ain't laughed. All I've been doing is trying to be somebody, and I did pretty good. Worked myself up from where I had nothing to eat, no place to sleep, to top guy in my business. Splendid. You're a man after my own heart. I wish the world was filled with Eddie's. 
How long is it going to take us to get up there? Any moment now. All right, down there, send it up. Phew! Old man Schmallhausen must be baking with rotten eggs. It smells like the devil, too, doesn't it? Wow, them ashes are still hot. Hey, Janitor, dash them ashes with water before you set them up. Hey, I don't feel nothing. Of course not, you haven't got a body. If I ain't got no body, how am I going to get Smiley? Hey, you mug, look at what you're doing. No one can see you or hear you until I find you a body. Now, come on, Eddie. How are you going to find it? Well, everyone has his physical counterpart, his double. I happen to know where your double is. You mean a guy which looks like me? Spitting image. Well, supposing he don't want to give me his body. He'll be asleep. He won't have anything to say about it. What happens when he wakes up? When he wakes up, he'll be you. And who'll I'll be? You'll be him. Huh? To everyone else, you'll be him. Of course, yourself. You'll be yourself. Oh. Hey. Give me that again, will you? Oh, stop worrying about it, Eddie. Leave everything to me. I leave nothing to you, con man. I'm sorry, Eddie. It's this, uh... Cold air makes me irritable. I don't like cold climates. I don't feel nothing. And if you ain't got no body neither, how come you feel cold? I've been down below so long that even my soul has grown accustomed to the heat. Hey, if I ain't got no body, I ain't got no fingers, right? Right. No fingers, no fingerprints, right? Right. I can get away with murder. Not exactly. Without fingers, you cannot squeeze the trigger. Yeah. I sure want to squeeze a trigger. Hey, what is this, a uh, double cross? This ain't St. Louis. Smiley's in St. Louis. The body we want is here. And don't you forget, you have a little job to do for me first. That was our deal. Okay. All right, Renegan. What's the idea of bringing me here? I'm going to get to the fingers to squeeze that trigger. How do you figure getting it in a criminal court? How did I figure getting you out of that jam down below? But I did. Yeah. That was neat. This will be even neater. Trust me. OK. Let's go. Hey, there ain't a seat in a joint. What's it here? What's the matter with you? There's cops in them seats. Well, they won't mind. They won't even know. Your Honor, the defendant in this case has failed to establish an alibi. The testimony conclusively proves that this man was at the scene of the crime and at the exact time it was committed. Therefore, I respectfully request the court... That's a lie. I'm not going to take any more of this. Get a doctor, quick. What happened? He collapsed, did he? No judge ever passed out on me. This court is now adjourned. Come on, Eddie, let's go. Hey, don't give me no orders. I do all the leading. Get me? Yes, Eddie. Don't you never forget. I'm boss. Yes, Eddie. I shouldn't have been so brusque. I've given him a sedative. Let him sleep a while, then get him home. He'll be all right. Sure, doctor. All right, gentlemen.
told you I knew where your double was. If this guy had hung around St. Louis, he'd have got bumped instead of me. Too bad he didn't. Is he the guy you want to get? Yeah. What'd he do to you, send you up? I was sent down, not up. Hey, this guy's a judge. I ain't muscling in on no judge's body. What difference does it make? It'll serve your purpose and mine. Yeah. What happens when he gets up and finds I'm him? When we're through with him, he won't know a thing. Not a single blit, solitary thing. What about you? Ain't you gonna find yourself a body? Yes, I'll get one. But you first. You're the important one. Yeah. Don't you forget it. I won't forget it, Eddie. What you doing? Fusion, Eddie. The power of heat. I'll fuse you into this man as steel can be fused into steel. Relax. Relax. Yes, Doctor. Is Miss Foster still here? Yes, sir. She's making coffee. Oh, fine. May I inquire how the judge is, sir? Oh, good night's rest. He'll be all right. Oh, that's good. Run down to the druggist, will you, and get this sedative just in case he wakes up. Yes, Doctor. It'll be ready for you. Is he still sleeping? Yes. There you are. Well, thanks. There's nothing serious, I hope, Matt. Mm, excellent. No, I don't think so. However, I've been expecting this for some time. Why do you say that? One can only do so much, especially one of Fred's temperament. When he awakens in the morning, I suggest you pile him into his car and get him away for a couple of weeks. I'm only the judge's secretary, not his wife. If that ring means anything, you soon will be. But Fred can't possibly go away now. Why? Well, with the election only a few days off, we speech at the auditorium tomorrow. Well, Barbara, you've always had your own way. I suppose you will now. That's not fair, Matt. Nobody can stop Fred, nobody can push him on. I'm the last one who wants to see him hurt or sick. You believe that, don't you? Of course. I'll bring him to your office first thing in the morning. No, no. I wouldn't do it at all. Not all people are ready to accept psychiatry as a normal branch of medicine. The general impression is, I believe, that a man who needs a psychiatrist must be crazy. <laughs> Ridiculous, of course, but there you are. And some people are rather reluctant to cast their votes for lunatics. I hadn't noticed. It'd be better if I came here. Bye, Barbara. Goodbye, Matt. Uh, Albert. Yes, Miss Barbara? I'm going home. And if the judge awakens during the night, Please call me. Yes, Miss Barbara. Judge, please, sir, your appointment's for nine sharp. Judge, your honor. Mm. I hated to wake you, sir. You were sleeping so peacefully. He 
did it. I got them. When what, sir? You got one, too. I hope so, sir. I can feel myself. I'm solid. Solid like I used to be. Are you quite all right, sir? All right, sure I'm all right. Nick, what, where's Nick? Hey, Nick! Nick, where are you? Hey, Nick! Did Nick sleep here, too? I'm afraid I don't follow you, sir. You better not. I don't like being followed. Who are you, anyway? <laughs> really, are sir? Are you going to tell me that I slap yes, it out sir, of you? I'm Albert, your man, sir. And if you'll pardon me, your bath is ready, sir. I don't need no bath. They cleaned me up good when they laid me out. Where's his duds? I beg pardon? His duds, his rags, clothes. Whose clothes, sir? The judges. I, I've got to get dressed and get to St. Louis quick. What am I, a judge or an undertaker? And you got nothing with fancy stripes? Fancy stripes? Oh, never mind. I'll wear one of these. All right, you devil crosser. I'm coming for you. Here you are, sir. What are you going to do? Help you into them, sir. Scram. But, sir, I... Scram! I... Yes, sir. Hello, Miss Barbara. This is Albert. I, I don't wish to alarm you, but the judge is definitely not himself this morning. I'm terribly worried about it. Oh, that'll be splendid. And do hurry, please. Thank you. Hey, you. You. Yes, sir. Get me a ticket on the next plane to St. Louis. But, sir, you, you, I... You work here, don't you? <laughs> well, really, Oh, yeah. For a good many years, sir. Well, get it. But your appointment, sir. I got an appointment in St. Louis, which comes first. But plane reservations are hard to get, especially on such short notice. Okay. Then call the airport and give me a special plane all for myself. Come on. Hey, I'll need some dough. Is there any around? Why, in the usual place, sir. Don't give me no double talk. Where's the dough? In the safe, sir. I don't see no safe. If I seem to be baffled Will by you... Will you shut up and do like I tell you? Where's the strong box? Behind the picture, sir. There's a flock of pictures. The one with the boat, sir. The button, sir. Got any sandpaper? Have you forgotten the combination? I don't need no combination. This is duck soup. Please, sir. Hey, where's the nearest hawk shop? You can't possibly leave town today, sir.
Hello, Eddie. How'd you get here? I never explain my actions. You better explain to me. I don't like no surprises. I have many more surprises in store for you if you try to run out on me again. I ain't running out on nothing. I was just hopping over to St. Louis to take care of that rat. That rat can wait. Parker comes first. Oh, it's being up so high makes me uncomfortable. I'm much happier down below. Scared, huh? I abhor altitudes. Hey, what's that? Engine trouble, sir. We'll have to go back to the field. What a strange coincidence. Wipe that smile off in your mug. I apologize most humbly, eh? Are you sure he said St. Louis? Yes, Miss Barbara. St. Louis. St. Louis. I can't imagine what could take him there. And at a time like this, with a thousand things to do. You should have done something, Albert. Phoned me or, or stopped him or something. I tried to, Miss Barbara, but he gave me a push and out he went. Oh, but that's ridiculous. The judge of gentility itself. He never pushed anybody. He never did any of the things he did this morning. From the first time he awakened, he, he acted peculiarly. Go on. When I went to help him dress, he, uh, he told me to scram. The judge said scram? That was the very word he used, Miss Barbara. Uh, you're certain you weren't having hallucinations, Albert? I only wish that were true. It's been most disturbing. I would have called Dr. Higgins, but I didn't have the opportunity. Well, I'll call him now. Very good, Miss Barbara. Hello, Dr. Higgins, please. This is Barbara Foster. Not a word to anybody, Albert. Oh, heavens no, Miss Barbara. Hello, Matt. Look, I'm at Fred's. No, he isn't here. He took a plane for St. Louis. Well, that's extraordinary. Well, don't be unduly alarmed. It may be only a passing aberration. We'll see when he gets back. Let me know the moment he arrives. And let me warn you, Barbara. No matter how strangely he acts, don't antagonize him. Humor him, indulge him. Remember, you're dealing with someone who's ill. Perhaps very ill. Now, you understand, don't you, Barbara? The important thing is patience. I understand, Matt. Goodbye. Well, Albert, we must be very patient with him. We will, Miss Barbara. Remember now, not a word to a soul. Your Honor, did you uh, miss your plane? Yeah. Albert, who is it? The judge is back. Darling! I was so worried about you. Who's the dame? Your fiance. The girlfriend. Or rather, the judges. Go ahead, Eddie. Make the most of it. She's all yours. Hey. This is okay. It ain't only a trigger I can squeeze. Why, darling, you've never talked like that before. Why are you staring at me? Just sizing you up. Not bad. Plenty of curves and all in the right places. Come here, babe. Please, darling. You don't have to be afraid of me. How about me and you stepping out tonight? It's been a long time. Please, Fred. Fred? You're Fred. Oh, that's a judge's handle. Mm-hmm. Who are you talking to, dear? Nick. Oh, Nick. Beat it. Scram. Yes, sir. My friend, you never talked to Al. Never Abby. mind what I never. There's going to be lots of things you ain't never seen a judge do. You better get used to it. 
Yes, dear, I'll, I'll try. Oh, please, Fred, you're hurting me. Hey, playing hard to get, eh? <laughs> What's so funny? I'm sorry, Eddie. Sorry. Now, what's your name? Oh, really, Fred? What's your name? Well, now, you certainly know my name. I wouldn't ask if I knowed. I'll call you Rosie. Rosie? Yeah. A little number I used to run around with. Built just like you. Come on, come on, relax. I ain't such a bad guy. Now, stop it, Fred. Hey, who you yelling you... at? I'm sorry, dear. Okay. You'll be late. I got lots of time. Of course, but you're due at the auditorium to deliver your speech. Come again? Your speech, dear, it's getting late. I do all my speeching with my rod. I want you to make the speech, Eddie. I'll be behind you, whispering in your ear. It's all part of the plan. Hey, I think you're doing a little too much planning. On second thought, dear, maybe it would be best if we postponed it. What do you mean, best? If I got to make a speech, I'll make it. <laughs> It'll smell, but it's okay. Perhaps you better take a few days' rest. I'll call the campaign committee and explain. What's the matter? What's the matter? Think I can't do it? I know you can, only I... Only nothing. I can do anything I put my mind on. Of course. Well, where do we go? The auditorium. Come on. We'll give it to him good. Come on, Nick. Just who is Nick? You're a con man I tied in with. Boys, we ain't been forgot by Lady Luck like I thought. Judge Parker collapsed on bench. Now ain't that just too bad? <laughs> <laughs> and listen to this editorial. Dare we leave the helm of our ship in the hands of a man whose physical condition is in question, now in the stormiest period in our state's history? Certainly not. And as patriotic citizens, we gotta do something about the situation. Yeah. Now well, back in St. Louis... Never mind St. Louis, Shagsy. Whatever you did in your hometown, we'll do it better here. The point is, we've got to see that the judge stays sick. We've got to see that his condition maybe even gets worse. Sure, boss. That's the idea. And we've got the judge hanging on the ropes. Now we've got to deliver the KO. Yeah. All of which is only to protect the people, mind you. Now, with our boy, people can go about their business in the pursuit of happiness, which is coming to them without worry. Sure, without worrying. That's right. Now, we're speaking at the auditorium at 2. That'll give you plenty of time. Put on a good show, Shagsy. One more cave in like he had in court yesterday, and we'll be dusting off the governor's chair for our boy. Come on, boys. Wait a minute. Hello? Oh, hello, sweetheart. It's my wife. Go ahead. And remember, I want to hear that the judge is taking a turn for the worse. We'll bring back his teeth. Come on. Hey, imagine me running for governor. Darling, you're too modest. Come on, let's go on the stage. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to case the joint first. Hey, look at that turn out. <laughs> hey, what are you going backwards for? Stick close. You're giving me the words, remember? Oh, there is his honor now. Excuse me. Hey, where are you? Please, darling. Well, Your Honor, we're all ready to start. Where's Ned? They're waiting. Let them wait. Thank you, sir. Hey, where did he go? There's someone with his honor. Uh, I'm sure we can find him a seat. Oh, that'll be fine. Yes. Darling, yeah, darling. Nice thing. Please, darling, everyone's waiting. I need Nick to help me with the words. Do you have your speech right? Now? That's it, Judge. We're getting a little worried about you. Children, you're all ready. Now it's time to go in. Your Honor, on behalf of all the boys and girls 
who are members of the Parker Clubs, and in gratitude for all you have done for them, regardless of who they are. Regardless of who they are. And where they come from. And where they come from, we want to present you with Lost it. Look at this one. Maybe it's one. Oh, there it is. Gee. This watch. Thank the children, darling. Thanks, kids. You're welcome, Your Honor. I like children. Fellow Americans, as the campaign for governor of this great state goes into its final phase, it is an honor and a privilege to speak once again in behalf of the candidate of the Citizens Better Government Committee, Judge Frederick Parker. The whole country knows of the famous Parker Youth Foundation created by our candidate 10 years ago. This one organization has reduced juvenile crime 97% since it was founded. <laughs> because Judge Parker is a man who understands that juvenile delinquency is not a matter of bad boys and good boys, but rather a matter of bad conditions and good conditions. He is a man revered and loved by his friends, respected and feared by his enemies, a man of countless virtues. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we have just seen, one of Judge Parker's numerous virtues is his modesty. <laughs> What's the idea of letting me down? I'm not letting you down. Far from it. What about this? Throw it away. Go out there and tell them off. Tell them off? What'll I say? Surely I don't have to tell you that. These people sent you to prison, Eddie. They're your enemies. The Thou Shalt Not Gang, the Law and Order Brigade, they hate you. They've always hated you. Now's your chance to tell them what you think of them. You're not afraid. I ain't afraid of nothing. Then go out there and give it to them. Call them by their right names. Call them every name you can think of. Yeah. Uh. It is my privilege to introduce the next governor of this great state, Judge mm -hmm. Frederick Parker. things. Take 
It's not you they're after, it's the judge. Yeah, but I'm getting the punches. But you're making a hero of the judge. You want him to make mincemeat of me? Idiot. I won't need that now, Mr. Kramer. Thank you. Are you hurt very much, Your Honor? <laughs> no. You sure you're all right, dear? You able to walk? Sure, sure. Gee, Judge, Your Honor, you're a champ. May I kiss you? The judge don't want girls to kiss me. You go right ahead, dear, if you want to. Nick. Oh, never mind, Nick, now, dear, please. Well, he was with... Albert, get me some antiseptic and bandages, quickly. Yes, Miss Barbara. Darling, you were magnificent. But you know you weren't cut out for that sort of thing. You know somebody who could have done it better? No, dear. But I'm afraid of the after effects. I know you're going to be ill. Hey, I ain't never been sick in my life. But, Fred, you were just... I'm glad Nick ain't here. Darling, what's come over you? What's this? Hey, take that junk out of here. And get me a drink. The mineral water, sir. I said a drink. Bourbon. Well, Fred, you don't drink. You just watch me. And some cigars. But, Fred, you can't smoke or drink. You know that. Are you kidding? What are you standing there for? Get. Darling, please, you'll only make yourself ill. Stop worrying, Rosie. Fred! Hey, how about some smooching, eh? Darling, you have changed. Want a shot? I wish you wouldn't, dear. You've had enough excitement for one day. I ain't started yet. Take a powder. Take a powder, sir? Oh, you mean scram. Here's luck, Rosie. Be careful, dear. I can do this all day. I better have Albert put you to bed. Hey, I ain't sleepy. You feel good. I've got to get home, dear. Home? Don't you live here? You know perfectly well I don't live here. The judge must be screwy or something. You ain't going home, Rosie. I am going home, and the sooner hey, the better. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey. Darling! Wait a Oh, Fred, I told you. That's all right. I'm all right. You don't have to worry about me. Um, I have nothing the matter with you. I'd be fine. <laughs> Miss Barbara, what happened? His honor just passed out. <laughs> Taxi? 
Hey, what's the idea? Get back in your cab or I'll slug you. Ah, don't get excited. Come on. No, wait, let's take this one. Yes, ma'am. I have the sworn affidavits and depositions from those witnesses in Chicago. They came in the mail this morning. What witnesses? What's all this about? Chicago should be pretty familiar to you. I understand your bosom pal has opened a couple of night spots there. You mean Smiley? Well, who is Smiley, dear? I don't see his name in these documents. When I finish with him, the only place you'll find his name will be on a tombstone. Well, what is he to do with the Bentley trial? I don't know no Bentley. All I know the is... The Bentley trial, dear. The case you're hearing in court today. Don't worry, Eddie. I'll be there. This gives you another go at Parker. You'll be sure you don't bungle it this time. Sure, sure. I know all about trials. So do you, Bob. Are you talking to the cab driver, dear? Keep your eye front. You want us to get killed? Sorry, Your Honor. Dear, listen to me. I was talking to Dr. Higgins. He said that... Listen, Rosie, I'm handling it my way. Place comes Bentley. Then comes that St. Louis two-faced double-crossing backstabber. Fred! I'll show you a few tricks on how to get Smiley. Tricks you never even dreamed of. Sure, sure. I go through with the trial and nothing flat. And then we shoot out to St. Louis. What will we do in St. Louis, dear? Not you, just us. Not, not me. Just us. Darling, you frighten me when you talk like this. This is strictly between me and Smiley. We're going south together. Uh, on, on a vacation? To Florida? Further south. It's a hundred times hotter. Boss, I tell you, them is on his own words. And get this. He said he was going to rush through at the trial, then hop quick to St. Louis and get Spiley. That's dangerous talk for a judge and a gubernatorial candidate to make. You sure you heard right? You're positive? Yeah, he called him a double-crossing backstabber who was running the racket with the judge's dough. Nice work, Jim. Boys, we're in. The honorable judge just put himself right out of the running. Shagsy, that hunch of yours was right. Hmm. This judge not only looks like Eddie, he's the biggest two-timing double-crossing candidate that ever ran for office. He's even worse than our own man. Are you calling the judge? I'm calling Smiley. This looks like what they put on a guy who was given a necktie party. Now tell me the rap on these Bentleys. Attempted murder. Mrs. Bentley and her husband tried to kill her father and collect his insurance. And one of them things, eh? Mm -hmm. They pushed him in front of a subway train, but they bungled it, the fools. The old man's alive, but somewhat mangled. The entire country's shocked by the ugliness of it. Somehow, they failed to see any beauty in it. What chance they got? Judge Parker? None. Well, they wouldn't have spent all that money trying to square things before coming up for trial. Did they try to get the Judge Parker? Oh, no. They wouldn't do that. They know it's impossible to fix Judge Parker. But Eddie Cagle now. Hey, who's spreading the dough? A man known as Big Harry. Well, what's his last name? I can't look up no Big Harry. I want to call him up and have him come here quick before the trial. Oh, no, he's too smart for that. Well, what'll I do? Well, you just dial spring 74242. I'll guide you. A little telepathic transmission. Always showing off with them big words. Mm. I used to dish out plenty of dough myself when I put in a fix. Not my chance to get some of it back. Twenty-five grand ain't enough to fix a rap like what this is. Why, it's... it's heinous. It's, it's heinous. The whole country is aroused by it. Yeah, it's aroused the whole country. But, Your Honor, uh, as is the case of the people versus Mitchell, 186, New York, 942. Like in the case of the people versus Mitchell, 186, New York, 942. They got 30 years. You don't want the Bentleys to do a 30-year hitch, do you? No, Your Honor, but if you'll only be reasonable, uh... Let me bring the Bentleys in. Mm. So you can have witnesses for the fix, huh? No, Your Honor. I just, just want you to see them and, and have them say a word in their own defense. Wait. Put the moolah on the desk first.
Your Honor, this is Mr. and Mrs. Bentley. They will tell you that this whole affair was merely the result of a tragic misunderstanding. This fine, upstanding citizen and this frail, innocent, law-abiding little lady were simply victims of circumstance. As a result of which, Mrs. Bentley has been under the constant care of her physician. She's lost weight. She's been unable to... Rosie. Rosie Morgan. Be. You was bumped. You was bumped. You didn't wait long to get hooked up with this lug, did you? You're on. Shut the... up. Oh, easy, Eddie. Don't ruin everything. You shut up, too. All them trips to Kansas City to see your poor old crippled mother. And you. Your Honor, get hold of yourself. So this was your mother, huh? Your little two-time. He's playing around with him all the time. But I got you now. Wait till the trial starts. I'll throw the book at you. I'll give you the works. I'll salt you and him away for keeps. Oh! Your Honor, the court is ready, sir. Here's your dough. You can't fix this rap. Not for a million. Not for all the dough in the country. Your Honor, are they trying to bribe you? <laughs> Imagine. Well, wait till I tell the story at the press, Your Honor. After this, you're a sense to sit in the governor's chair. Hey, don't you never say chair to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. You fool. You unmitigated, abysmal fool. If you had a body, I'd tear it apart. Good thing you can do that trick. You should see him. He's gotten worse. He's somebody I don't know anymore. What is it, Matt? What's happened to Fred? It isn't as simple as diagnosing a case of measles. No, thank you. It could be a throwback to his formative years, his young years, the boyhood years, when he lived in the slums. But what caused it? Fear, probably. Of what? Well, he might be afraid of the high office he's running for, afraid of being elected, afraid of the responsibilities it might mean, afraid of loving a woman like you. A woman like me? Yes. Barbara, I think Fred should withdraw from the campaign. Are you serious? Deadly serious. But you can't be. He's as good as elected right now. Yes, I know. Well, he'll be all right. He's got to be. He's got to be governor. From judge's secretary to governor's wife. Not bad. Oh, I'm mad. I... Barbara, we've been friends for a long time. You're the loveliest girl I've ever known. You're also the most ambitious. Yes, ma'am. I am. See, I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know much about neurotic conditions. But I do know that what Fred is doing, he must do. Psychiatry won't give a lot of poor kids a chance to grow up like decent human beings. And Fred Parker will. Psychiatry won't wipe out the vicious elements in this world, but the influence of Governor Parker will. And this ambitious wench, Barbara Foster, is going to help him do it. I'm sorry, Barbara. I guess I was mistaken in you. Forgive me? I'm sorry, too. I'm sorry that a man like Fred has to pay for all this with his health. But... Well, perhaps it'll work out. As a matter of fact, his condition may pass as quickly as it came. But he must be handled with patience and understanding. It's going to be difficult for you. Nothing's difficult where Fred's concerned. If you could possibly get him away for a short while, it would help enormously. I'll do my best. Good. Still friends? Of course. Always. Goodbye, man. Lovely, isn't she? Go ahead, Eddie. Make the most of it. She's all yours. Mine, huh? This day made like Rosie. Why I sent for you so sudden is this, Smiley. You've been negotiating to operate in the East the same as in St. Louis, which is okay with me and the boys on certain good and reasonable conditions, of course. I got conditions, too. Oh, sure, we're not gonna have any argument about percentages. It's only one question. Shoot. Eddie Cagle. 
What about him? Well, now that he's out, free again, ain't you heard? Eddie ain't around anymore. He ain't. Uh, he was bumped off the minute he graduated college. Hmm. Well, what do you know? That means you're top dog now. Nobody else. And you're operating alone? You don't have to ask nobody about nothing? You're learning fast. You wouldn't be holding out any important information on us, would you, Smiley? Such as, for instance? For instance, like uh, silent partners. You know, someone way up in political circles that's maybe getting a cut out of everything? I told you I operate strictly alone. We heard different. And we heard it straight, Smiley. You're hearing it straight from me. Yours truly, Smiley Williams. All right, Smiley, if you say so. After all, if you ain't exactly telling us the truth, it'll be complications, which somebody will get hurt. It's always the other guy gets hurt, not me. Send him to the judge's house. That will settle both of them. Just get them together. Tell you what, Smiley, I just had a thought. Before you open up, there's a guy you gotta see. If he gives you the okay, then we'll do business. You see the juice? Yeah, the juice. I'll give you his name and address. You better call on him right away. If he's not at home, wait for him. Judge? A judge, huh? Perry Parker. You better be getting on over there. <laughs> Is he the juice? Running for governor, too. Surprised? Yeah. I thought you would be. Is he tough? You tell us. We'll be waiting to hear how you come out. Bye, Smiley. So long. My children, my children, you'd be lost without me. The governor's mansion's all right, but this is where we're really living. Shall we go in? In? Where? In our house, silly. Oh, sure. Can't you just see it? Shining and beautiful. Well, remember, darling, all the fun we had planning all this? The location and the rooms and the garden. Come on, let's go up these three little steps. Careful now. Now, we're on our porch. Oh, darling, he spent a lot of time out here. After dinner in the evenings, when it's quiet and peaceful. Let's go inside. Hey, oh, wait. What's the matter? We have to open the door. Oh. Come in, dear. Now then. Hey, he forgot to close the door. When we're married, I'm going to insist that you carry me across the threshold. When? When we get married, eh? Well, don't say it so gloomily, dear. It won't be that bad. Now, over well, here's your study. The private sacred room. And there will be pictures of all the great men of law and literature and politics. And then over here by the window will be your law library. And a big lounging chair for you to slump down in and read. What do I want to do any reading with you in the house? My friend, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. A lot of nice things I want to say to you. Say them to me in there. That's the most important room in the house. What is it, the kitchen? No, the nursery. You mean... You want to live here with me and have kids and sit on a porch? Of course, darling. Look at me. You mean with me? The way I am? Or what you see and how I talk? I love you. See no difference? No difference that matters. Imagine I... I could have had all this 
been all this. People calling me your honor and smiling at me. Kids making a fuss over me and me not having to hide from something all the time. And you. I could have had you. But you are all that. You have me. I I got nothing. I ain't got even got myself. Don't say those things. At least not out here. You promised today it'd be our day. You promised to forget all about the court and the election, everything. Please, darling. Let's just enjoy ourselves. <clears throat> I beg pardon, sir, but perhaps you'd uh, prefer to come back tomorrow. Evidently, his honor is unavoidably detained. I'll wait. Yes, sir. You happy, darling? Yeah. But I'm scared, too. Of what? Yeah, I don't know. I've never been scared of nothing in all my life. Dr. Egan said you no, might... No, it ain't nothing the doctor knows about. Something I can't figure out myself. Except maybe it's because I found something I never had before. Something I want to hold on to. A place like this. And feeling quiet inside me. And you slander. No, you're not. It makes me so happy to hear you talk like that. Happy? Fred, I'm beginning to find you again. You see, I, I made a deal. Well, how could I know that I'd meet up with a girl like you? I'd cut my arm off and hurt you. That was a very touching scene. What are you gumshooing around for? I have some nice news for you. You remember I promised that if you'd help me get Judge Parker, I'd help you get Smiley? Mm hmm Well, I happen to keep my word, even though some others don't. I did everything you asked me. And bungled everything, too. Instead of ruining Judge Parker, you made him more popular. That fight in the auditorium. You're refusing the bribe in the Bentley case. And now this... Fantastic billing and cooing. A guy can change, can he? Oh, not you, Eddie. It's too late for that. Besides, a halo isn't your particular dish. However, what I came to tell you is this. Smiley is in town. What's he doing here? He's come to extend his cafe business. He's going to open up in this city. With your money, Eddie, 
The money you went to jail for. The money he killed you for. Seem important to me. Oh, no, really, Eddie, you're going soft. What's more, you're getting yellow. Don't you never say that to me. And then prove I'm wrong by carrying out your end of the bargain. Well, I. I can't leave Rosie. I mean. Barbara. Smiley in town is not only a threat to you, but to Barbara, too. You mean... You mean the girl is in danger with Smiley here? Figure it out for yourself. When he sees you, if you don't get him, he'll get you. Like he did before. With a smile on his face. And you know what that would mean to Judge Parker. To his body. And where would that leave Barbara? So you see, either way, for her sake, for the sake of any little children she may have, you've got to kill him. You've got a way of putting things which makes sense. Although inside me, I know that I shouldn't follow your advice, but it's like you say. It'll only be doing Barbara a favor. Protecting her kids. Our kids, maybe. Now you're beginning to see straight and think clearly. Here we go. I gotta tell Barbara first. Honey, I, I gotta attend to something, something very important. I gotta use your car. My car? All right, dear, if you want to. Thanks. I won't be long. Look, honey, I want you should straighten me out on something. I'll try, dear, if I can. If we was already married and, and living in this house and had kids, and one day a big rat full of poison came out of his hole and showed his teeth, I went for the kids' throats. What would you do? There'd be nothing to do but destroy it. You mean kill it, don't you? Well, yes. Thanks. Thanks for straightening me out. Delightful weather. Take that grin off in your face. Now, please permit me the privilege of expressing my happy frame of mind with a few facial wrinkles. It relieves the tension. Look out, I don't put some wrinkles on you. It'll stay for keeps. What's the matter? I wasn't speeding. I didn't say you was. Let me see your driver's license. I must have left it in my other suit. In this state, that ain't good. How about your owner's license? Tell him it's your fiance's car. Tell him you borrowed it to go to a campaign meeting where you're making a speech. Don't you recognize me? I'm Judge Parker. I'm running for governor in the next state. There's a political shindig there tonight, and I'm making a speech. This is my financier's car, see, and she just let me have it for the emergency. What's her name? 
Barbara Foster. That's an interesting set of circumstances. A girl by that name phoned the police to report her car stolen. And the description of the car and the license number was identical with the one you're driving. I'm telling you, you're making a mistake. That's what they all say. Anyhow, you can explain it down the station house. Follow me. You know, this should convince you conclusively, Eddie, that I'm the only friend you have. First your best pal, Smiley Double Crosses, you and now this girl. It ain't so. The cop pulled a boner. The girl ain't had nothing to do with it. Wishful thinking, Eddie. She knew you were out to kill, which meant you wouldn't be governor, and she wanted to be the governor's wife. You're a liar. Mankind has been beset by women since Adam, and Barbara is the true offshoot of her grandmother, Eve. You're yeah, bad. And will you at last come to see that I am the only person you can trust? No, further than, than I can control this building. Stop talking to me, will you? You're only making a fire burn in my head. Now listen. Stop my head! Hey, what's with you? Who are you talking to? Nobody. I, 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 uh, I just rehearsed my speech. Yeah, well, come in the other room. That lady's here, the owner of the car. Barbara. Barbara, tell this copper who I am. I beg your pardon? Huh? What's this? Do you know this man? I've never seen him before in my life. Please, don't do this to me. You'll have to file a complaint, lady. All right. Barbara, wait. Let me, let me talk to you. Alone, just, just for a few minutes. This may mean everything to you. To, to your future. Please. Barbara. There are certain things I can't tell you, because I know you won't believe it. But you got to believe this. For the first time I can remember, I'm trying to do something for somebody else without caring what happens to me. I was beginning to change, you understand? You've done it. Don't spoil it now. Don't let me down. For your own sake. For the sake of them kids which is going to sleep in that nursery you were telling me about. Fred, you said something about making a deal. All right. I want you to make a deal with me. I'll get you out of here. If you'll go with me to a minister. And marry me. Right now. But I can't. I... Take it up, Eddie. Then you can finish what you started out to do. Right. I'll marry you. Hey, Nick, you're going the wrong direction, going in the right direction. He said in another place, if anyone offend one of the weak who believe in me, it will be better for him. The millstone. Better. Where did I leave off, Agatha? It were better. What were better? If anyone offend. If anyone offend one of the weak who believe in me, it were better. Well, we want to get married. Why? Too many people are getting married these days without asking themselves why. Well, there's an idea. Make a note of that for a sermon. Yes, dear. My husband is preparing his sermon. He'll be right with you. Won't you sit down? I want to offend one of the weak who believe in me. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And he said in another place, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. 
It is better for thee to enter life maimed than to go into the Gehenna of inextinguishable fire. Yes, said it, brother. Expressions of approval will be confined to amen. Please. For it is written that everyone shall be burned with fire and every victim salted with salt. When the devil speaks to you, my children, heed him not. For his only desire is to lead you below. He is the evil one. Watch for him. No matter what name he introduces himself with. Lucifer, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles. Hey. I know him. Where was I, Agatha? The Mephistopheles. Oh, yes. Heed not Mephistopheles, my children, lest you suffer eternal damnation. When he whispers in your ear, turn away your head and hearken instead to the angel on your shoulder. But if you ain't got no angel on your shoulder? You have if you live right, son. Be good, do good. The devil wields no power over a good man. Sit tight, honey, I'm coming right back. Where are you going? I'm going to tell off the devil. Good for you, son. The altar's to your left as you enter the church. Well, Eddie, I just come out to tell you something. There's a smart operator in there what knows all the answers. You don't say. Mm -hmm. He even knows who you are. Do you know? Yeah, Nick. I know. I'm afraid I'll have to take you back, Eddie. You know too much. The dope I got says you can't get the drop on a good man. That hardly covers you. My record's clean this trip. I ain't done nothing wrong since you brought me back. Come on, Eddie, I've only the kindliest feelings toward you. And to prove it, I want you to go right back in there, marry Barbara, and my blessings on both of you. We don't want no blessings from you. I'm true with you. Beazel Bub. And therefore is not by any to be entered into lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Under this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. I require and charge you both. Wait a minute. Please, dear. He brought up something important. Honey, I gotta speak now, like he says. I can't marry you. I'd be doing wrong. And that's just what the devil is waiting for. Oh, dear Lord. Fred, you don't know how hard I've been trying to help you in every way. But I'm afraid I can't go much further. You're not only destroying yourself, you're destroying me. And I just can't stand it any longer. Please, let's go on with the ceremony. But honey, I can't. My eyes have been opened. Marrying you now would be the worst thing I could do. Which don't mean that you lost Fred Parker, but like you said this afternoon, you'll be finding him again. And you'll be proud of him. Like you always was. <laughs> Honey, if I could only make you understand. <laughs> I do understand, darling. Come, I'll drive you home. Please forgive us. Eddie, you have a visitor.
I'd like to know that in his breast pocket, he's carrying the very gun with which he snuffed you out. He's been carrying it around ever since. Brings him luck, he says. You can now repay that long overdue debt with your own gun. That's what's known as poetic justice. Mephistopheles, my children, lest you suffer eternal damnation when he whispers in your ear, turn away your head and hearken instead to the angel on your shoulder. Plug no guy what's asleep. I'll wake him first. It's so much simpler this way. I made him drowsy to make it easy for you. You make everything easy, don't you? All right. Have it your way. Wake him up. It might be more amusing. I'll go fix him a drink. Make it feel like old times. Fixing a couple of drinks. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I'm operating in St. Louis and other spots. Mm hmm. And I'm interested in a couple of joints here in the East. Bellamy steered me to you about getting a passport. Sure, sure. I understand. So, as is my nature to come to the point pronto, what's your cut? A hundred grand and 25% of the take. <laughs> Hold on, Judge. I may be from St. Louis, but I ain't no hick. You operating alone? No partners? All alone. I heard there was uh, Eddie Cagle heading your outfit. Yeah, but he's dead. You sure? Well, I ought to know, because I... Because uh... you... what? I got the flash as soon as the cops found his body. I heard he was your pal. Yeah, we grew up together. I used to do his thinking and he'd do my fighting. So you paid him off by putting four slugs in him from his own run. And what kind of talk is that? You after blackmail? This is Smiley Williams you're talking to. Who should know? in me. You. You. Why are you so nervous? You look like you've seen a ghost. Stop it, Eddie. Get on with it. Shut up, Memopopolis. My name is Smiley Williams. Pleased to meet you. They call me Judge Parker. But maybe I ain't Judge Parker. Maybe I'm somebody else. Somebody you know. No. No, you can't be him. Him? Who's him? Eddie. Eddie Cagle. Oh, you can't be this whole thing. It's, it's screwy. Maybe it ain't screwy. Why don't you start figuring it out? If I ain't Judge Parker, I must be somebody else. Maybe I'm that pal of yours, Eddie. Eddie Cagle, the one you chopped down with his own rod. Figure it when you're afraid of every shadow, every footstep, every sound, every dark alley you pass, every car that whizzes by. Hold up in your hideout and go slowly nuts. 
I'm trying to figure, is Eddie Cadle dead or is he alive? And then when you can't take it no more, go blow your brains out. There it is, your own gun. Return the compliment, Eddie. Stop whispering in my ear, devil. Lay on me, will you, Judge? I'll do anything you say. Chance. You didn't shoot him. We had a bargain. He was took care of a better way. And I never even touched him. Now you go back to your hole in the ground. You're in my way. I cannot go back without you. Well, no, ain't that too bad. Now listen, Eddie. No soul has ever escaped from my domain before. I've got to get you back or I'll be jeered at and derided. Why, the upheaval will be cataclysmic in its proportions. What a laugh. <laughs> Looks like you got yourself behind the eight ball. Oh, come on, Eddie, please. Have a heart. You'll have to take it up with the boss. I'm getting my orders from him from now on. Must I run afoul of you again? Am I doomed forever to be vanquished? What has this subhuman creature incubated in the recesses of foulness done to become your favored? It was with evil intent that he ventured forth. He volunteered to do my bidding. Must I be humiliated by this maggot? I demand my rights. You're missing the point, chum. There's an hombre called Judge Parker and a sweet gal named Barbara what's been playing good ball with a lot of kids which might otherwise join up with your team. And me, Eddie Cagle, is staying around to see that you don't mess things up. So long as you remain in the judge's body, neither you nor he can do anything. Once more, you're making Barbara very unhappy. The longer you remain on Earth, the longer she cannot be joined with her rightful mate. It was you who got me in. You were evil then. I had power over you. I get it. If I don't myself help you take me out of Parker's body, Barbara and the judge don't get together like they should. All right, I'll make you a deal. If you lay off the judge and Barbara for life, I'll go back with you. I accept. I have to. Are you ready? Wait, I... I want to say goodbye to Barbara first. I cannot wait. You're waiting like it. Hello? Barbara? I gotta see you right away. Hop in your car and come right over. Yeah. Thanks, honey. in that outfit, honey. Thank you, darling. I wanted to look my best. You said we'd go to dinner and a show. Um, I'm afraid that's all. Because... Because I... I'm going to wait. I ain't never coming back. Dearest, what do you mean? Why would you be going away? Well, I can't tell you, because I'm afraid you won't understand, baby. I only understand that wherever you go, I want to go with you. Next. You don't belong where I'm gone. Oh, no, no. Eddie? I got everything set for you, honey, so you won't have no more trouble. 
When I'm gone, the judge can straighten everything out. And you and him get married and go live in that swell house. And have kids. Eddie. Please, please don't say those uh, things, Ralph. No, 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 no. I feel kind of funny. Kind of dizzy. Darling, go in and lie down for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll lay down. I, I just wanted to tell you... Eddie. Dr. Higgins, please. Do you know where he is? Please try to reach him and, and tell him to come to Judge Parker's apartment immediately. This is very urgent. Thank you. Barbara. Barbara. You have tears in your eyes. What's the matter? It's nothing. Nothing. Everything's fine now. Well, so long. Funny. I never thought people's faces looked so good. There are lots of other things I never noticed before. If I'd only know the first trip around what I know now. When I get you down below, I'm going to take special pains with you. I'm going to introduce you to agonies undreamed of. I don't think you'll be so tough. No? No. Because you know why? Because you made a sap of yourself. You don't want your boys to know that. No big shot wants to look like a sucker before his own mom. Now, if I was made a trusty, this is sheer unblushing blackmail. You ought to know, brother. You ought to know. Brother. 